Let's bring in our special guest. Join us in San Diego, California, retired crime lab director for the San Diego Police Department, Jennifer Shen. Jennifer, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. You know, the first thing, a story like this, I can imagine exactly what it does to the entire community when it happens. And it has a lasting impact on that community because everyone looks around and says, you know, that, that could have been my son, that could have been my daughter, and we knew that little girl. And, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it really is, is shocking. It is um, something that it breaks your trust. You, you know what I mean? Like you want to be able to trust neighbors. You want to be able to, you know, live your life. And, and something like that happens and it's, it's broken forever. I, I agree with you. And I've worked some pretty terrible child abduction cases. And it is... You know, the thing about it that's so traumatizing, it's a child um, and, you know, it, the innocent child is one of the worst victims you can have. But, you know, the thing about it is that all parents everywhere can put themselves in that position. You know, having your child run out to the street or run to the mailbox or, or be out playing with their friends and come in last. I mean, you can see it happening to you. And because you can see that, it's just so terrifying. So it's terrifying to the whole community on top of the fact that, you know, they knew this little girl and, and they loved her. So it is just one of the most traumatic things that could possibly happen. All right. It's 1999. Uh, the scene was, uh, I think it was a relatively simple scene, right? We're talking about a bicycle, some money that is, is tossed around. Uh, my guess is they have gone all over that bicycle looking for anything, right? I would think so. But, you know, it just kind of goes to show you how lucky we are in these days. There's so many opportunities to come up with video, look at cell phones, um, you know, cameras in traffic lights. I mean, there's so many ways that you can get information and they didn't have that then. We also have touch DNA now. And so I would imagine they would have pulled that bike out and swabbed every inch of it and just analyzed it using this very sensitive new techniques we have to see if they could get any foreign DNA to the family. Um, use genealogy. There's things that they could do, but that would that would require the suspect who took her having handled the bike. And you know, there just isn't any forensic evidence in this case outside of the bike and the money. Right. And you don't know if she's grabbed off the bike, if she just runs off the bike, if she's trying to run away. It's it's not clear what is happening. But the um, other there's many shocking aspects to this. But I want to go to some of the comments that people are posting because Dean's is really. Um, exactly what I want to talk about. Uh, Dean writes tonight, if it, it, if it was such a short 90-second time frame, it sounds like someone was waiting for Mikhail to be alone and then struck quickly. Maybe they were parked up or were living or hiding nearby. It, this, is a, this is a crime of opportunity, right? Because there were a whole bunch of kids out there. Then at some point there were just two kids. Then there was just one. Yeah, you know, and that is a great point by Dean, because honestly, that is a short period of time. And so it almost it makes you think someone was lying in wait, that crime of opportunity, which almost makes you think that it was someone who knew her, knew her habits, lived nearby, was watching from somewhere. If there was a vehicle on the street or a person on the street that looked out of place that had been waiting and, and, and you know, kind of stalking her. It feels like someone would have seen that. So when you have a case like this, oftentimes it is someone who knows the child or the child knows. And that's what Sharon is writing about tonight. Sharon writes, I almost think it had to be someone she knew. No screams or anything. Right. And, and looking at that neighborhood, the houses are, you know, there's a bunch of houses there. I, I think you you could hear the um, ice cream bells. You could probably hear the scream if there was one. Right. And that's the thing. So fast, so quick. You know, she was a young child, so she could have been overpowered quickly. But to have no noise and have no one see it and have it in such a short period of time, it's just, I mean, the whole thing, it's like she vanished into thin air, which, you know, clearly she didn't. But it, it, it does lend yourself to think that it had to have been someone nearby, maybe who lived in that neighborhood, who, you know, is not out of place in the neighborhood that people wouldn't think about seeing, I wouldn't notice and feel like something was odd there. The other thing, we're showing some age progression uh, pictures because the other part of this is we've seen this in the past, especially with children. Sometimes children are abducted, not killed, but abducted and for, for whatever reason. So it's also important to get those images out there just in case um, 
you know, someone took her and raised her or someone took her, whatever they did, that there's a chance she could be alive. Right. And we certainly hope so. That's what you always pray for. And it happens sometimes. It absolutely happens sometimes. But the, the hell this family has gone through for the last 22 years is just, it's just unbelievable and, and so tragic. You know, this reminds me of a story we covered uh, just the other week where there was a, a, a young girl by herself was just waiting for the school bus and you see the white van go by and then you see it coming. And, and again, there we got to see how quickly it is. That young girl was able to fight her way and, and, and break away, but that could have been a case just like this. It, that's all it takes is someone who's just driving and then has that impulse. They, they stop, they act, they pounce, and they're gone. Right. And, you know, again, I, I, I think we're in law enforcement. We feel fairly blessed that there are so many tools that we have now that we didn't before so that we actually have more ability to get information to help solve some of these crimes and get to our victims quickly in a situation like this. I mean, they just didn't exist back then. And it made everything much. It's just a good old fashioned detective work. You know, and it was a lot harder. There was a lot less to go on. Absolutely. And a lot of kids these days also have their, their cell phones on them. And that's another way mm -hmm. that they can be tracked. Jennifer Shen, join us in San Diego. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a good night.